everyone. Barbara from allbrands.com. Thank you for joining us. This is the All Brands Show, and I have a very exciting guest, and we're going to be talking about a very exciting new machine. Um, and give us some comments. Let us know if you have any questions. We are going to be talking about multi-needle embroidery machines, um, Juki Tajima Sai. This is the brand name right here. So I know that you'll be very excited to hear all that's new from Juki. I have loved Juki my whole life. Um, I actually have, I've been borrowing my mom's MO735 uh, DE cover hem, uh, chain stitch, serger, five thread serger machine. And I am absolutely in love with Juki sergers and, um, and Juki machines. And I know that you'll be in love with the Juki embroidery machines made by Tajima. So hi, everybody. <laughs> Let's say hi. Hi, Kathleen. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Charlene. Hey, Rita. So we have a very special guest, Tim Bond, and here he is. Hi, Tim. Hi, Barbara. Thanks for the invite. Thanks for allowing, giving me the opportunity to show off our wonderful embroidery machine for you. But remember, it's more than just a machine. It's an entire system. Yeah, I agree. And thank you for being on the show. It's for the second time. And it's always a pleasure to have you um, hanging out with us and showing us what's new because I'm learning a lot about this new machine as well. We just got one in our Metairie location, and I'm sure we'll be sending more to other stores. Um, and I've heard great things about it. Well, good. It's a good team up between Juki and Tajima to bring a good commercial quality machine to home sewers, cottage industries, you know, people on the smaller scale need two with heads and a big fancy machine, something that's complete for them as well. I also noticed behind you, you're holding your mom's serger back there. Are you holding it ransom from her or what? <laughs> I don't know if she's going to get it back. <laughs> I learned, well, how, to... <laughs> I learned how important cover him is and um uh, and yeah and juki has great tutorials on their youtube channel on how to thread it so i was just i i learned it in a day and i'm feeling so confident with it and it's just a very well made awesome serger well good i'm glad you were able to learn it in a day some people kind of struggle with it but i'm sure you already had a little background with some of our sergers before so it was probably just more of the new features on that machine than compared to your older machine. Yeah, it's just the threading, you know, sometimes with the serger, you know, people are, uh, uh, you know, just a little scared of threading it. And there's a, a lot of little spaces that it goes through, but man, the, I just followed the Juki YouTube videos on their YouTube, uh, Juki USA. I mm -hmm. think is the name of their channel. Juki and, Home. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. And they were so informative. So, yeah. We, but we're not here to talk about surgery. No, we're going to talk about embroidery machines. And, you know, the nice thing about our Tajima Sai machine is that commercially, it's not made for home specifically. It's made from commercial standards. So the machine itself, you can run it all day long, you know, 8, 10, 12, 16, 20 hours without having to worry about it. And maintenance on it is just like a regular commercial machine. You have to put a little drop of oil here and there, but otherwise you just treat it like your regular sewing machine. It'll give you years and years of good service. But you know something about the sewing machine is it's not just the machine, it's an entire embroidery system. So it's bundled with software and hoops. That's what really sets it apart from some of our other machines. We're gonna start with the software because when you're doing embroidery, generally speaking, you've got a project in mind. You're thinking about what am I gonna put on this project? So let's say for instance, I'm working on a shirt or a blouse and I wanna put something on the front of it. I've got my blouse, I've got my shirt, but I don't have my pattern yet. So where do you get your patterns from? Most of us, we hop on the internet and we go find our pattern. We probably have three or four embroidery sites that we like to shop with and you know, that's great, but I've got it on the computer now I need to get it to the machine. So let's take the steps on the computer first because you're already comfortably seated. Why stand at the machine when you can be comfortably seated to assign your needles and do changes to the pattern that you might wanna do. And then you'll see how easy it is just to send the pattern to the machine 
and step over to the machine and go through the four or five touches on the machine to make it run for you. So we're going to start by jumping over to the computer. Yeah, and we're going to start with the Dejima Writer Plus software. That comes with the machine, correct? It comes with the machine. So you don't have to buy anything extra. You simply download it, install it, and I think you're going to be surprised as to how much you can actually do with the software. Yeah, so that's a Pulsemade software. I know it has tons of designs. I read 1,000 included designs in the software, and then there's even more in the machine, which is cool. And can I just... Should we should we make them wait for all the features, or should I tell them my favorite features of this? Machine? You can go ahead and tell them your favorite. <laughs> point out some other ones when we work on the on the computer with the software. What's your favorite? Yes. My favorite features of this machine. It has a laser pointer on it. It is a compact machine, so I know it's like twenty two inches wide by twenty three inches deep. So the size of this machine is awesome, and the speed. Um, is actually, I read that it's 800 stitches per minute, uh -huh. but the satin stitch on this machine is actually faster than most other models. So your end time is actually sooner than with other models of, of embroidery machines. I thought that that was so interesting. And now that you're going to talk about the software, there's like some digitizing in the software that comes with this machine. That yep. blows my mind. Okay. Those are so my I'm, favorite. I'm so things. glad you like the speed on the satin stitch because that is one of the things that's a big plus on the sign machine as compared to some of the other machines that really slow down to 150, 200 stitches a minute. The slowest we get is 600. So if I've got a six or seven millimeter wide satin stitch, I'm not going boop, boop, boop. <laughs> I'm keeping my speed up so I can complete that project in better time. Mm -hmm. So. Let's switch over to the computer real quick, and then we'll come back to the machine, and we'll talk about more about some of those other fun features on the machine as well. Cool, and you can tell us your favorite features too. All right, we'll do. Okay, okay Barbara. Yeah. So here is our Tajima Writer Plus software and i want our viewers to understand that this as we said before comes with the machine so when you are registered with the owner of the machine you're going to download this software and install it on your pc and there's a personal activation code that you're going to get just for you and your copy of the software so once you get into the user site there's all sorts of videos to help you on the machine but there's also videos to help you do things on the software, which is very important because together is how you want to operate. You want to operate the software and operate the machine. So here I'm starting with a blank page and I'm just going to touch on a few of the highlights of the software. One of the things that people always ask about is fonts. We have fonts built into the machine, but we also have fonts built into the software. So you can see here, I have regular fonts where I can just put in regular text. And I have 30 something fonts that are built into the software to play with. I also have monograms, so I can build monograms, left, center, right, letters. They're designed for monogram work. But I don't like limitations, and most of us don't, so we can actually use our true type fonts off of our PC. Everybody's got a PC with 1,200, 1,400, 1,800 different types of fonts on it. Now you can use your selection of those fonts in the software itself. Now, one thing I'm going to talk about in the fonts is the regular font. So we're going to go in here, and it automatically pops up and gives me text. I can move this around on the screen. I can place it. I can do resizing on it. I can resize it or drag it by the corners. But I also want to be able to have controls over the font, and I need to be able to change the text. So I'm going to go over here to the right side where it says text, and I can make this anything I want it to be. Oh, you know what? It's off the screen, so I'm going to move it over to give myself a little center. See how easy it was to recenter that? That lettering, oh, yeah. that lettering is a little large for me. So I can resize it here, or if I know what size I want it to be over here on the right side, I can come over here and I can make a definitive size 
So if I wanted this to be 15 millimeters instead of the 25, I simply come in and make it 15 millimeters. See how it resizes for me? It recalculates the stitches and everything. But remember, this is a this digitizing software gives me options. And sometimes just having letters isn't enough. You need to be able to control the letters and control what they're going to be stitching on. So we actually have underlay options that you can add to the letters. Underlay is very important when you start stitching on different types of fabric because you need to support the letters. Otherwise, on a knit, they kind of just sink into the knit. So here I have my choices for my underlay. And I can have parallel underlay, perpendicular, or I can have a contour. If I want to know what they look like, I can come down and I can play the, the item as if it was going to sew out for me. If I can get my window to move for me. I actually really, really like that underlay uh, I think is so important because if you want it to be stiffer or have more drape um, like if you want it thicker stiffer you add more underlay and then if you want it to be more of a hangy like say you're putting it on a quilt or something you don't want it to be stiff so it's great that you can change that in the software before you embroider it right. and you can see here on the screen it's showing you the underlay as it's stitching out as the example on the screen so you know what to expect when you go to the machine. This is very important that you have the availability to see what's going to happen with your letters or your embroidery pattern before you go to the machine. What am I expecting it to run like? So you can see here there's underlay already displayed here and it's starting to stitch the satin elements of the letter B for me. So this is true on all of our patterns and all of our uh, patterns that we create or the patterns that are built into the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and let this complete for me. And I like to have trims and all those little things done in between so I don't like jump stitches so I can actually control them inside trims and lock. And that's another option over here on the right side. But you know what? This isn't all about letters. You remember you were talking about those built-in patterns that you liked? Well, there are little star. So from our star, I can come in and I can grab from different categories, different patterns. Well, you know, Halloween's kind of close. Let's go to fantasy. Oh, we have three little fun ghosts here. So let's pick on that one. We're going to select it. And it's going to populate up on my screen. Now it overlaid the letters for me, but you know what? If I don't want those letters anymore, I can click on them and just make them go away. Now I just have the ghost to work with. I can resize the ghost. I can change the colors on him. I can have lots of capabilities to do, but I still have all the controls I had before, plus a few more because now I'm into an embroidery pattern, not just letters. So you see over here on the right, I still have my underlay. It's very important when I want to lift my stitches and, and not let them just sink into the fabric. We can do beautiful embroidery, but if it doesn't have the right lift to it, it's just regular embroidery at that point. We always want to make sure our embroidery is defined better. And it's defined by the digitizing process. So I've got my pattern. I like the size. I like the colors. What else do you think I can do with it? I want to add something to it. This is one of those features I find lots of fun to play with in our software. Now, I'm going to click on a little button. It's going to give me a little option in the right-hand corner. And this is called Sketchpad. Now, you may have seen a similar product available as a standalone version, but ours comes in the software. And this allows you to actually just draw stitches on the screen. It's really fun and easy. So if I wanted to grab a thicker line, four millimeter wide, and just draw a line around, I don't know if you can see it because it's going to be white, but there you go. I can draw lines and have it filled in with stitches. Oh, I don't like that one. No simple. No easy, uh, simple and easy to undo it. And I can come back and I can change the density on it as well. This is strictly just drawing on it. I'm not really digitizing. It's doing the digitizing for me. I'm just drawing with it. That's what the sketch pad allows you to do. So you can make swirls and circles and all sorts of things with it and control the density on it without having to really know how to digitize because the sketch pad handles that for you. That is phenomenal. So you could use your mouse, but if you're really into it, you can get one of those um, those um, sketch pads, mm -hmm. you know, that has like the the pen. Um, 
the heated pen that goes with it or even you know um like something like that to like really draw um, right. something very intricate that is so neat some people like to draw with their finger i can use the mouse or my finger it just depends on the size of the screen the bigger screen the bigger i can work with my finger but smaller screens a mouse is much more convenient for me to use if you have big hands you know you don't have a lot of room to play with sometimes but I like the fact that I can sit here and draw, and if I don't like it, I can take it off, and I can add and subtract. That way I can actually make the patterns more mine. So I've got my pattern. I showed you how about the sketch pad. I showed you about the fonts. Well, how do I get from here to my machine? That's a good question. Well, <laughs> I don't know the answer. <laughs> up here at the top, I have a machine, and I can just send to the machine. So if I just send the pattern to the machine, it's gonna prompt me, it says, some of the colors in the design do not match the threads on the machine because they're talking to each other across the network. And it knows that I've got a different color selection on my machine. So I'm gonna tell it okay. And the first thing it's gonna tell me is that it thinks that color six should have been white, but they've got it listed as flesh. So I'm gonna take six and on my machine, number two is actually a metallic silver and I wanna make it metallic silver. But in my color chart, it thinks it's red. I'm not really worried about the color chart. I know what's on my machine. And I'm going to tell it OK. And the pattern is already sent to my machine. And so it's wireless or are you hooked up with a cord? I'm hooked up on, the, on a network. So it's just got an Ethernet port on the machine. And I just connected it across the network. Got it. But now that pattern is already in the machine. So when I'm ready to go sew, I can go to the machine and pull that pattern up. Colors are all set. Needle needle to color match is all done. It's just a matter of pulling the pattern up and sewing it. But let's talk about one other nice feature in our software. What do you think that's going to be? Hmm. Something with making designs. There we go. How about a little auto digitizing wizard? Yay, that's my favorite. So I can pick an image and bring it in and it will create all the stitches from that image for me. Now, here's one thing. We're going to go step by step through this real quickly so that you can see. And I'm going to pick a pattern that's going to be a little flower, a little rose. I'm going to bring it in. You can see my little rose flower there. And I picked this one because sometimes some patterns don't quite get filled in correctly. And you need to be able to edit it. And I'm going to hopefully be able to show you a quick edit on here. So I'm having it trace all the elements for me. Here's my size, 117 by 119. That's a nice size to work with. I can always resize it later, remember, but this is the size identified as my image. So I identified the colors for me. That's not bad, huh? I'm gonna pick a red, three different shades of green and a black. That's pretty good. And I didn't have to do anything except click next. Here's my segments that I can control. So if I want wider or I want to allow wider or narrower stitches, I can control that in here. So I'm going to take and I don't want any satin columns wider than five millimeters. It's just a matter of personal preference. Ah, remember we talked about underlay previously? Here, yeah. I can select the type of fabric I'm actually digitizing this pattern for and the computer with the software will then compensate the pattern to match for that type of fabric. I'm going to leave it on normal for now, but if I selected a stretch fabric, like a light grub or something that had a little give to it, it would compensate by making the pattern a little bigger. It might give me a one or two or three percent larger pattern, allowing for it to shrink down, pull in when it stitches on the knit fabrics. Now, one That's thing that, nice to have that feature with the machine when you buy it and not have to get additional software. Exactly. And it does all these things for you. So you can sit and play comfortably on the computer. One thing I do like is I always like a lock stitch. So I want all of my stitches tied off at the end. Wherever there's a trim or it's changing color, that's just me wanting to have it to be nice and clean because I don't like tails that I have to come back and trim. So I'm going to click next and it's generated my segments for me. So I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna accept the defaults and go to the next image. So it's actually now going to finally generate all of my stitches for me. Look, there's my embroidered pattern. Oh, but I have a couple of things in there I need to address. 
One is this little area right here that looks like it's a dropout. See? And then I have some red up here that came in as a satin that I think I wanted to match the rest of the, of the rows so it's all a fill-in pattern. And I can actually change that. So first, let's come down here and address my satin element. That's great that it just automatically, though, like um, you can bring in the image, it automatically sets the stitches, and then you can modify it. Exactly. Here's my breakdown of my segments on the right side, as you can see on the screen. So I can go in and I can grab the individual segments that I'm looking for. This one's pretty obvious. You can see it's the first one. So when I select it, select it on the right, come back and give myself a pointer. It's now selected on this other side. And I can come in and I can move these points around should I so desire to do so. Or I can actually take the whole section out if I wanted to leave that as a blank. So I can pick and choose what areas I want to actually adjust. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab one of my little tools. And I'm going to drag these lines up so that it will better fill in my area. Come on, everybody go up for me. See, so it's allowing me to reshape, recontour this so that I'm filling the area with the stitches. Hey, let us know in the comments, everybody, if you've ever done this in software before, created your own design with them. What do you call this type of digitizing? This is auto digitizing right now. I'm manually adjusting it. So I'm doing the manual editing portion it with auto digitizing help. Yeah. So if you have a multi needle or embroidery machine, um, just let us know like where, what you've done uh, with digitizing and where you're at. So the nice thing is that I have full control over this. So many pieces of software out there don't give you this level of control. Sure, they have a nice auto digitizing, but your, your actual availability to go back and edit pieces isn't there. You have it in this software. And remember, this all comes with the machine, so it's creating that embroidery system for you. So I played with this enough that I like the way it flows across, and I'm going to leave that section, but I need to go fix that red section. So. This is the section here and this section over here. They both have satin elements to them. And they kind of would be okay if I had more satin elements in my flower, but the rest of my flower is pretty much a fill. See, there's multi-needle penetrations running through those areas. So I want them all to little, match a little bit better. This area here looks like this item here. And sure enough, it is. See, I highlighted it on the right and it's showing me the selection on, on the left. So let's zoom in a little bit more. We're going to move it down. Oops. See what happens when you grab it and you move it? You're going to have to undo that one to get it back into position. <laughs> so I've got my, got my item selected, but I need to control it. And that's where my properties comes in because I want it to match more like the other stitches. You see here it's listed as satin on the right side. Look at all the choices I have now. Every one of those represents a different style of stitching to fill in the area with. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to just pick thatched basket. And you can see how it still looks different, but it's a filled in pattern. I'm going to grab something that might look a little bit more interesting, cornrow. So you can see as I pick the different ones, it's going to make that change on the fly for me. That is beautiful. I love that. The so way that's you, stitched. you could actually go in and change all of them to be cornrow if you wanted them all to have that special effect. I'm going to go back here and just select pattern one. So it's just kind of a standard filled in area, or maybe I can make it, you know, smooth. Smooth will make it lay down better. But I have this other area I'm going to need to work on also. So I don't know about you, Tim, but I could spend all day just playing with those different stitches and looking at them and not get any embroidery done, just playing in the software, making things look different. It's really neat. Well, I will tell you, I have that problem as I start in here with the list of the patterns and I go, oh, I like that one. Oh, I like that one. And then I get 10 or 12 down the list and I forgot which one I really liked and I have to go back through them again. So you can actually 
kind of, I hate to say it, waste a lot of time playing with the software and not getting much done. But it's fun to play with it, and you'll learn the, the items, you'll learn the pieces that you like, and those are the ones that you'll find yourself using over and over again because things become favorites to us, just like I like this particular portion of the software or I like this function on the machine. It's things like that that you like. Those are the pieces you're going to take advantage of most. Yeah. So you did, you imported like an image. Was it like a JPEG? This one was a bitmap. I just opened up the bitmap into the auto digitizing. You can grab a whole variety of different images and bring them in. You don't have to have a bitmap. They can be a JPEG. They just can't be a GIF, a GIF. Mm -hmm. But you can bring in Corel Draw images. You can bring in uh, Adobe Illustrator images. So there's a large variety of images to bring in. I've worked in other softwares where you could only bring in a bitmap or a JPEG. This software allows you to bring in about eight or ten different uh, picture images and work with them with no problem. Wow. So can you also bring in an embroidery design and edit it in that screen? Yes, you can. Wonderful. You can also edit. I'm going to just open up a new window here. I'm going to go back in and grab one of the patterns that we had before. Let's go back into fantasy. Let's grab our little ghost again. Another thing I do, Tim, that I'm so bad about is whenever I get a machine or software that has tons of designs, I have to look at every single design that comes in that <laughs> software. Um, and I just love that. Oh, look who's joining us, Carrie Cunningham. Joyce says she loves the corrections. And um, Trudy says multi-needle machine is on her dream list. Kathleen says that she hasn't used auto digitizing but she's edited designs, changed angles, et cetera. Uh -huh. It seems like the software is pretty simple to use. And it, uh, yeah, it, I, I've come from a background that I used a similar program from Pulse Micro previously. So my learning curve was a little easier, but even if you just sat down at it the first time and you watched a couple of the videos that we have for it, you would be amazed at how quickly you could pick it up. And I'm going to answer a question I know somebody asked earlier um, in one of the emails. It's not available as a separate program. Tajima Writer Plus only comes with the Tajima, the Juki Tajima Sign Machine. So you can see here on the sides, I can go in and I can do some editing here as well. But I can actually bring in my own pattern and edit it also. Now, one thing we didn't talk about. I'm going to close this one down. And that is templates. How do you make a process faster? You use a template. So if I wanted to use a template, I'm going to select this one here. It's going to bring it in. Here's my template for my pattern. It's actually a pattern. This is actually an embroidery pattern, a guitar, and text. And they are two different pieces. But they're already placed for me. And this is what the template does for you. So you could actually substitute in your own embroidery pattern for the guitar, and you could simply come in here and change the text. This is all part of the software. This is not an add-on piece. So there's lots of flexibility in here for things for you to play with. I don't know how to do the layout. We have templates for you already. So that's a really nice thing to be able to do also is to be able just to grab the templates and go to town with just not worrying about the placement, just substitute in what you want to substitute in image and text wise. And of course, there are patterns. So here's my text and here's my guitar. So I can actually come in here and change the colors and do the different things on it. I can still substitute out the guitar uh, for another pattern if I so desire, because I can just grab the guitar itself and delete it off. It's so simple. Mm -hmm. I love it. So we've got our pattern already sent to the, to the machine from before, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to talk real quick in the software here about manual digitizing. And that's what this option is right here. So I can select a complex fill, which means filling an area. I can select a satin stitch a steel or style, depending on how you wish to pronounce it. This is allowing you to give an outline satin border to, uh, to a pattern or just simply draw a satin line. 
The nice thing about this is sometimes I find a pattern that doesn't have any outlining to it and I want outlining. I can actually manually add that to it as its final outline. It's also good if you want to do an applique. And these are just manually punching it or, you know, selecting it and then being able to drag around. So oh, Tim. <laughs> oh, Tim. <laughs> so that's just so easy to play with. I can add that if I want to be careful about it, I can be careful about it. But you can have fun with it. And I'm seated comfortably. I'm not worried about standing at the machine to do all of this. I love this. It's so simple. And really, it really unlocks a lot of possibilities for editing and, and making your designs different before you send it to the embroidery machine. You don't have to um, be locked into one particular design. Exactly. When you buy an embroidery machine that doesn't have software, you're kind of stuck with the patterns that come with it and you're stuck with whatever patterns you're buying. You want to get a little bit more creative, you have to go buy a piece of software. Ours is already coming with the sign machine, so you're actually getting that, that system to start with. So we're going to go back over to the machine in just a second, and we're going to talk about some of the things on the machine, and we're going to talk about a uh, baseball cap in particular on it, and then we're going to come back to the software because I'm going to show you a screenshot of something that somebody specifically asked about uh, the capabilities on the machine versus other machines. All right? So give me just a second. We're going to jump up and go back over to the machine. Hello, everybody. I did. Okay, I'm here back now. <laughs> okay, now we're going to make a little adjustment on the camera. So bear with us if it's a little jiggly for just a second, but I want to talk about baseball cap. Lots of people want to do baseball caps and they can't do it on their home machine. They can do it, but it might be a little more difficult. Remember, we have an option to do baseball caps on our machine because it's a commercial style machine. And the nice thing is that you can opt not to buy the baseball cap or you can opt to buy the baseball cap combination. That's a set of additional hoops and two baseball caps plus your driver plus your mounting bracket. So you can actually do baseball caps really, really simply. But there is a unique feature to our baseball cap driver, and that's what I really want to point out. So give us a second here. We're going to adjust our camera down. Okay. I'll just, um, I'll come full screen. And I want to let y'all know, like, you can make money with embroidery machines. I don't personally do work for other people, but this is an excellent employment job opportunity, or if you just want to do some things on the side for some extra income. And if you opt for financing on this machine, you can, you know, create designs for people and stitch them out in the machine and then use that income to totally source the funding of the financing. Um, so I think that's, it's a win-win situation. How's that? That's good, because we're going to talk about right down here. So this has my baseball cap hoop driver already attached to the machine. Now, I can tell you, I used to have a different brand years ago. And to put the baseball cap attachment onto that machine, I had to take off the arm, had to take off the bracket. It was kind of an ordeal. With this one, I can actually leave my original arm on and four bolts is all I need to put this baseball cap driver on and then release the four bolts and take it off. It's really that simple. But there's one feature about our Tajima baseball cap driver that is kind of unique to most of uh, embroidery machines. That is this little rod right here. This is a stabilizer rod. And you set the cap hoop driver up one time to match this rod on the machine, and that's it. From then on, that rod can stay on the machine. It's not in your way when you're doing regular embroidery, but it adds stability for your cap hoop driver. What it's doing is it keeps the cap hoop from being able to flex down or up or side to side when it starts stitching on your baseball cap. That's very important when you're trying to do heavier things on your baseball cap, trying to punch through puffy foam, or I'm dealing with one of those baseball caps that has a lot of buckram in the front rise. It's stiffer. It's going to cause a little bit harder work on the needle, but it can also cause this mechanism to flex a little bit more than what you would like it to. With the Tajima 
this rod here keeps all that flexibility out of the equation when you're doing baseball caps. So that's a, a very important feature to consider when you're looking at a machine that you want to do a lot of baseball caps on. This is a great way to ensure that your baseball caps will all be sewn correctly with no flex, no give in the framing mechanism. So that's what this is going to do for you right there. So we're going to give us a second. We're going to go ahead and take this baseball attachment off and we're going to get back into the regular embroidery side so we can talk about the screen and some of the features on the machine. All right. That's, yeah. So I wanted to go ahead and maybe um, show a video just real quick on um, just how uh, the stitching looks like when it's on caps. How does that sound? That'd be great. All right. We'll be right back. Let's see. Wow, that is really cool. And I like how it shows how close to the brim that um, cap frame yep. gets. Yes, we can actually get closer than most of the other machines out there. So we can get basically about a half inch from the brim with our cap hoop. The cap hoop has a single strap on it where a lot of them have a double strap. We also can get a larger pattern on our caps because of that single strapping area. So it's a nice feature to be able to do baseball caps, get closer to the brim and have a little larger pattern on the face of the cap. So here's my, hey, Tim. I my, my, my firmware. Sure. Hey Tim, um, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't lose Pat's question in the shuffle. Um, she wants to know how the operating system compares to some QVP machines. And I think that this is an excellent time to maybe address that. Okay. This is a Tajima product. So the software and the design and interface is all Tajima. So it's not our software. It's not our design. We are co-branded with them to market and sell this product. It is an exceptional product. And even though it's commercial quality and it's got a commercial interface, you're going to see, I'm going to punch through the screen and you're going to see that's pretty easy to use. So you don't have to worry about anything that's intricate. Remember we sat comfortably at the computer. Now we're going to show you how easy it is to run through the machine. So yeah. there's really not a comparison to our regular Juki products with our software. I, and I think that this is an excellent marriage between the two companies because Juki is so well known in the industry for commercial uh, machines mm -hmm. and Tajima is so well known in the industry for commercial embroidery machines. I'm not sure if they're the biggest, but in my mind, I have to think they are because every time I go to a factory, I see these machines all in a row um, where people are using them for production. Yep. Um, so it's they're both uh, both companies um, are in Japan, correct? Right. And this okay. machine is manufactured in Taiwan. It's made in Taiwan, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So Japanese, Japanese engineering Japanese. is very good, <laughs> yeah. I have to say. Just like our just like our home machines from Juki, we bring industrial features into our home machines. So now you've got an industrial or a commercial embroidery company making a compact commercial machine for the home sewer. So you can take advantage of that good quality, the construction quality, the durability of it without really con being concerned about it because you know that the quality is in the machine. And Juki's, we're concerned with our brand recognition, just like Tajima is. So it's actually a good marriage for both of us. Yeah. So on our screen, we have sent from the computer to our machine, we've sent our pattern. Now the machine, when it fires up, oh, you know what? I'm gonna back up one second. Barbara, I'm gonna turn the machine off a minute because I want the viewers to listen to the machine when it starts up because our machine runs very, very smoothly. 
So it's going to go through its startup cycle. This is when in the tech world, they're like, it's thinking, it's doing all of its checks, mm -hmm. making sure everything is okay because there's so many checks. Heard our little tune. Now it's going to finish its processing to load the software. It's going to come up and prompt me. That's pretty quiet, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So that's our movements in between, and our hoop movements are just as quiet because of the type of motors in the machine. The movement is smooth and quiet. Your noise is going to be coming from the actual stitching. So we're back to our home screen. Remember, I have letters built in. So I can come in here, and I can grab letters, and I can actually spend time typing on the screen to set my letters. They are sizable. So each letter comes in three different sizes. So you're not stuck with just one size or having to worry about a size on it. But remember, I'm kind of lazy. If you remember from my last visit, I'd rather sit at the computer and do my letters over there. I have more selection. I can pick different sizes in between. I'm not stuck with just three sizes. I can resize them any size I want on the computer. I can also do my placement faster on the PC than I can on the machine. But this is those things for that quick one-off thing. I want to do the name. I want it in a 15 millimeter letter. I can come in here and do it right away. Pattern selections. So you can see here, I have a LAN connection. This is the area that I would find patterns I've sent from my laptop or from my computer to my machine. The nice thing about the Tajima side is that in the regular, it's going to show all of the patterns that I have sewn in my machine. It automatically stores them. How many of you have a machine that when you want to save an embroidery pattern into it, you have to go tell it to save it into a memory? This machine saves them automatically. It'll save about <gasps> 200 wow. patterns. And you I can mark them as favorites so they will not automatically just drop off for you. That's what the little star down here is for. So there's some nice features right there just to make it easier on the machine so that you don't have to worry about doing something. It saves it for you automatically. Yes, Nancy says nice, and I agree. Not Oh my gosh, because sometimes you never know what's going to happen. The lights are going to go off, and then you lose everything. Exactly. So your pattern is stored. Your, your position is stored. If the pattern goes out while the machine is running, you can come back into resume mode and resume the pattern. So let's back up here a minute and return to my home screen. Thread colors. And configuration so i have all the parts that i really need to be able to control are here on my main screen but i have one thing i want to do first because remember i had a baseball cap on and i took that baseball cap frame off so i need to come in here and tell it that i'm not using that baseball cap driver anymore remember when you tell the baseball cap driver it automatically is going to limit your pattern selection i can't select a pattern that's 200 by 200 millimeters because you can't sew that in a baseball cap so when I've got that turned on, telling the machine I've got the baseball cap on, it will not let me select my larger patterns. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to tell it to grab my regular size four by four inch hoop. So now it's loaded. It's highlighted on the screen here for me. So I can now just back up to my home screen and I can go back and grab my regular pattern. So let's go forward into my pattern. Let's go to my land connection here. There's my little ghost. Remember the ghost we sent over? He was here waiting for me. He doesn't look so scary anymore, does he? Hey, Tim, yeah. what's the embroidery area on this machine? The large embroidery area is 200 by 300 or 8 by 12 inches. Got now, it. people think, you know, I need to have a bigger than that. Well, 8 by 12 inches, that's a pretty good size hoop. Let me give you an example. I like the hoops, too. And they're rounded on the edge. They're rounded on the corners, but 8 by 12 inch. I'm holding it to the front. So if you can imagine I wanted to cover the back of a jacket, this would cover the back of a jacket. So that's a good size hoop to work with with a good size frame. Our hoops are also a little thicker, and they are reinforced. So it's the inside hoop has reinforcement lips on it. You can see here. This edge that comes around, it's not just the thickness of the frame, it's the entire span inside as well. 
So it's got lots of stability to the hoop, to the inner hoop, so that you're not going to make it flex when you're trying to tighten up that project. Now remember, you don't want to get too tight. You just want to make sure that the fabric and the stabilizer are stable and unified in the hoop. There is such a thing as burning your fabric, and that's where you've cranked it up too tight that you've actually put burn marks onto the fabric. I've been known to do that on occasion. I try to avoid that these days. Yeah. So Joyce asks how many hoops come with the machine. So Allbrands has a specific package available that we'll get into a little bit later, but I think there's two hoops um, with the machine from what Allbrands is uh, offering, but you can add on all of the hoops for a super, super discounted price. Correct. So that's an option on the product page. All right. So that hoop, that eight by 10 hoop comes with the machine. And the other hoop is your four by four inch hoop. Now this one, I've already hooped a bag on here to show you how easy it is that you can actually do a bag without having to rip open the side seams to get it onto your flat machine. So this is a nice feature to have when you're trying to do bags or things like that is that you can just slide it right onto the machine and not worry about the bottom of it. Let me see if I can get this on here for us. And Remember, this is a commercial machine, so it's going to be tough to get it in there. We want it to lock into position for us so it doesn't move. So you can see here that bag is hanging down underneath here. It's not in my way, and I can let it just hang there throughout the entire duration of my embroidery while I sew. Now, is that a crosshair that I see on the fabric? That is a crosshair. That's our laser crosshair on it. A lot of companies give you a little dot or a little half inch. Maybe we can zoom in and see if we can't show you, but ours is about two inches by two inches. Can we tilt that down and get a better picture on it? I can see it pretty well. Okay. That looks really good. And I love how small the footprint is. I mean, maybe your hand is really super big, Tim, <laughs> but, or maybe you're just like, but like the machine is, Tim's not like a super huge person, I promise. The machine is actually very compact. Yes, I'm actually on a portable table. Mine is mounted to a table so I can travel with it. So this table is actually 24 by 24 inches. Wow. So you can see I'm just barely front to back. I'm just a little bit over the edge and then side. I still have a little bit of space on the sides. So it is a nice compact machine. You could actually, two people can comfortably pick it up. One person picking it up, you might be a little uncomfortable trying to pick it up by yourself if you're not used to picking up about 80 pounds of weight. Generally, I tell people, figure you want two people to move it around. So when you buy it and you take it and you get it home and you're going to set it up, you're going to want a second person just to help you lift it for about three or four instances during the process of assembling the machine. Which, by the way, there's a video that takes you through that step by step. And I have to say, Juki has some great videos on this machine on their channel. Um, that I'll link uh, because I, I think that they're just really good videos. So here's my pattern. It wants to run a trace. Now I've got my hoop advanced forward. So when I hit trace, it's going to air out. There's my little red error symbol because I'm too close to the, to the hoop. So it will not let me proceed until I make an adjustment on the positioning. So positioning adjustments real simple. Four arrows, up or down, left or right. And I can reposition it to be where I need it to be. Then when I go to the next step, it's going to come back and ask me, oh, I'm going to trace again so it can re-verify the position for you. You really, you really have to do something really bad to get it to stitch into the hoop. Virtually, I have never been able to get it to hit in the hoop. I wish I could say that about my other embroidery machine, but this one's pretty safe that you would have to do something really nasty to the machine itself, like knock the arm out of location to get it to actually stitch into the hoop. So once I've got my positioning done, if I needed to adjust it, I can, but I'm gonna go back to here. I'm gonna go tell it to set forward. It's gonna run my trace again for me. Hopefully I've got it so that it's not gonna create a problem. You can see the hoop is moving. If I wanted to have something marked, I can see on my lasers where it's moving to on the fabric for me. So it's going to complete the cycle and it's going to take me to the next step. Once it's completed, I have a big symbol that says press start to start sewing. And I can just press my start button and it'll start sewing the embroidery. But I want to talk about a couple of things. One is you notice my hand is down here on the side on the leg of the machine. 
there is nothing blocking and there's no movement down here. So I'm not worried about having something hanging down below here. If you like to do towels, towels need some extra space to hang out there. And if you have arms or pieces that are moving on, on the legs of the machine, they can be in the way. Our machine doesn't have anything down here. Our entire drive mechanism hangs from up here in the back behind everything. So there's no moving parts on the sides here to get in your way. That's a nice feature to be working with some of the bigger, bulkier items. I like that a lot. So the other thing that I like about our machine, besides the fact that I have all this nice space, I also have a little flip up guard here. Okay. I have my laser, right? But I have thread sensors. So whatever active thread is running, there's a thread sensor. If it does not advance, it's going to stop and automatically back up some stitches for me. So I can then start again with a little bit of overlap, or if I want no overlap, I can advance it forward or back. So I actually have ability to control the forward and backwards, uh, the forward stitch movement or backing up in my stitches. So here I'm going to jump a, a hundred stitches. Okay. To execute. Yes. It just moved as if I had stitched a hundred stitches forward without taking a single stitch, which means I can skip through parts of a pattern easily. Or if I've broken my thread or it's shredded because sometimes they shred and they don't actually break, I might need to back up a little bit. And that's where I can tell it that I want to back up a little bit as well. So these are nice features to have to be able to control where you are in your embroidery pattern. Information on the side here is just that information for you the colors and the order they're going to sew and which needle is associated with which color. Now, remember I set these on the software, so I don't need to worry about what they are here now because when I sent it to the machine, it already had that information. Basically, it's just a matter of pressing the button and walking away and letting the machine do its thing for you. I noticed some people ask about threading uh, embroidery machines. We have tubes here. It's not air threaded. I am sorry to say those tubes kind of lead people to think that, oh, it's going to air thread or it threads itself. I'm sorry to say it doesn't, Barbara. We have a system that we put a threading mechanism through. We hook the end of the thread onto it and we pull it out the other side. Yeah. Currently, These there's tubes. no such thing as a self threading embroidery machine, but maybe in the future. Maybe in the future. But the nice thing is, these tubes help keep the threads organized and keep them from flailing back here on the back end of the machine. Once they come through here, everything is a guided path. So I'm going to come through the guide, through my tensioner. I'm going to come around my sensors. I'm going to come through another guide piece here, come down, up, through my take-up lever, down through the guide here, a guide at the top of the needle and the eye of the needle. Just like threading your home sewing machine, except you get to do it more than once when you first do your setup. But after that, how many of you have a serger and you just tie on and pull through? That's the easiest way to change the thread. See, Barbara says, yeah, I do that. <laughs> That's the easiest way to change your color threads. And if you need to do 12 colors, you sew the first eight, and I clip the threads for the other four, and I come back and I tie them on, and then I stop and pull them all through at one time, rethread my four needles, and then I tell it to complete the other four colors on my embroidery pattern when I have to exceed eight colors. Very rarely. Most of my embroidery is six or seven colors. Occasionally I hit eight, but most of them are six or seven. So that's a nice thing with threading the machine and being able to tie them on and pull them through and not have to worry about them getting hung up. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in here, we talked about our letters before. We talked about our embroidery patterns. We talked about our needle uh, color assignments, but somebody asked a question about the built in letters. And this point, I want to go back to my computer so I can show you a specific image and we're going to talk about the built in letters a little bit more detail. Okay, Barb. Okay. All right. So yeah. So I'll go ahead and add that to the screen. And, um, I did have a question that I wanted to bring up and since we're going to the software, this would be a good time to do it. Um, does the software split the design so you can embroider, in the hoop. So Sharon, um, as soon as he gets on, um, I'll have him uh, check on that for you. Looks like here's that. Oh, okay. So we'll get to you in just a moment, Sharon. That's okay, about, um, lettering. Now. Do you want to know about splitting the design for multiple hooping? Yes. No, the software does not do that. 
because we do not have an actual multi-hooping environment. That does not mean that you cannot, or you do not have the ability to manually split the patterns. Mm -hmm. Remember, we have editing capabilities on the machine, on the software, so we could actually grab groups of stitches and remove them or copy them off and put them into a separate uh, embroidery pattern. So we could actually create our own, but there is no automated process for doing that. Okay, thank you. All right, so our built-in letters on the machine. This is very important. Somebody asked about underlay or the commercial quality of the letters built into the machine. I like showing this example because this is a prime example of what you get when you're buying a household machine as converting as compared to a commercial quality machine. So this first image up on the left with the, with the green thread, this is the letter C and you see that there's just this one little arc of stitching. So it's stitched down here at the bottom to help set the tail of the thread, but then it just ran a quick long like basting stitch up to the top and started doing its satin stitch right over it. That's the letter C. There's no underlay, which means it's just a column of satin stitches with actual no support. Our Tajima Psi machine does an underlay outline and then comes back and does the satin on top of it. So that underlay is giving the lift to the edges of our satin stitching to help give it definition. And this is not just unique for our block letter. So that's why down here, I'm showing you one of our fancier letters that's built into the machine. It is also giving you that same outline underlay support for the satin stitches on your letters. I just happened to pick the letter C. It was easy enough to see and makes it visible for everyone to see it on the screen. And it's a nice, easy letter. We use C a lot uh, in embroidery. So that was what I wanted to show you about the commercial quality on the letters that are built into the machine. Now remember, when we do our own letters, we can control on the software our underlay. But in the machine, that's the basic underlay that's provided on all the letters. So Barbara, was there any other yeah. questions from anybody before we go back over to the machine while I'm here at the computer? And if I have questions about the software, I can go in and look at that again. Um, we didn't have any software specific questions, but we did have about people that purchase out of state service and training options that are available for the machine. So, um, okay. See. So okay, here we are. Let's, uh, all right. So back on. Okay, <laughs> yes. great. All right. So we have videos. Well, let me back up a second here. There's a user site for the Tajima Sai user. When you purchase your Tajima Sai, your Juki Tajima Sai machine, your dealer registers you and you will get an email notifying you that your registration is there and you will create your login, password information. And that's what gives you access to all of the training that's provided by Tajima. Now, some of that training is already out in the wild on YouTube, but it's easier just to have everything in one spot because you log into it, you get your software, you get your key code, you get videos, books, and documentation, not only for the use of the machine, but also maintenance on the machine. So everything is in that user site for you to explore. And it's not just one or two videos. The videos extend from unboxing it and setting it up to doing letters and monograms in the software. So there's a whole series of videos in the user site for you to, of course, to explore, check on, View the videos that you're interested in, come back and view the ones that you weren't interested in at the beginning, later on when you want to do something. And of course, you always have the support of your dealer, which is very important because you want to make sure that your dealer is there to provide you with that extra level of support that you can't get from a video. Sometimes you just have a quick question and you can't find it in the video. What do you want to do? Pick up the phone and call your dealer. Let your dealer answer the questions. If they don't know, who are they going to call? They're going to call me or they're gonna call our educational staff. And the nice thing is that we like to play with our machines, we like to use our machines, and we like to be able to make sure our customers are happy with the products. There are sometimes we get into the machines and things we can't figure out, 
that's when we'll go to Tajima and get an answer for us to answer your questions. But so, so you have three companies home. for support. You have your dealer, allbrands.com. Right. You have Juki and you have Tajima back right. you on this product. So that's great. <laughs> and of course, there's updates to the machine and to the software. Now, I know everybody's like, oh, updates, more money. Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. Updates to the machine are free. And our last updates to the software were at no charge also. And they're just put onto the user site when they're available. So you can just check back on the user site periodically and do your own updates at your leisure. I find that's very convenient because I just go in and check it every once in a while and find, oh, I've got an update. Okay. I don't have time to do it today, but I'll have time to do it tomorrow or maybe next week. So you can download those updates and install them at your leisure. I will tell you that when I first started on my machine, I was back before version 2.0 and then we went to version 2.0 and now 2.2 on the machine. And every time we've done an update to the machine or Tajima has done an update, it has been something worthwhile, giving us more control factors on the machine and the way we interact with it, which is always a plus when you can change the way you do something that's difficult and it's made simpler for you. So they're very cognizant when they're doing their updates on the machine and on the software as well. Any other questions, Barbara? No, I think that um, I think that we've covered all the questions. If y'all have any questions, you're watching it maybe after this live, still comment your questions because we do moderate those and we will get back to you with an answer. So this is so exciting. I love this machine. And you know what else I love about it? No. The price. <laughs> <laughs> the price and that you can buy it on the internet without yeah. having to go to a local dealer necessarily. You can, Juki has a dealer locator that you can find a local dealer, but you can purchase it online. And when you purchase it from allbrands.com, it's free shipping. And if you're outside of Louisiana or Texas, there's no sales tax uh, because that's the only two states where we have physical locations. So that is pretty awesome. And I have the, um, Drum roll, please. The price of this machine is under $10,000. That is unheard of. So now, you get Barbara, that. Go ahead. You mentioned financing earlier. Yes. So don't forget, it might be $9,999, but you can have 60 months, 0% financing. Yes. So that That's makes it even time, more right? affordable. That that's all the time, correct? That is all the time. Our that financing from, from Juki is available all the time. So it's not like I have to buy it within these five days or I have to wait till next month when there's a special. You can buy it anytime and get that financing. It's available all the time for you. Yeah. So now your your package is, is for nine ninety nine includes what, Barbara? That includes the two hoops and the software with that. And then if they want to get every hoop that's available, which is like the, the cap hoop with the two cap frames on it, like the whole system, the driver, right. the, um, the jig and the two frames. And then like all of the rest of the hoops that are available, it's a $1,800 value. Uh, and we have it for 1400 and you can bundle that in for the financing. Correct. So, if you're going to get the base model, it's is only it's only $167 per month for 60 months. And I think Tim, it might be pretty easy to recoup that in just output on <laughs> having a side business with this machine, it will pay for itself. Yeah, certainly. If you base it over your financing for 60 months, you don't have to really do a whole lot of business every month. Remember, you're going to have a little bit of a learning curve, but that learning curve will come quickly. And when you start doing things, you're going to go, oh, this is easier. And then it just becomes practice. And then it becomes just root. You just do it because you know how to do it. It's just like your muscle memory just says, oh, I'm going to slide this in here. I'm going to press this down. I'm going to tighten this. I'm going to slide it onto the machine. You really don't even think about it anymore after a while. It'll become that easy. Then you get to concentrate on the fun things like playing with the software. Nancy says that's awesome. <laughs> I agree. Now, Barbara, there are optional hoops that are available for the machine as well. And those are some of the specialty hoops. We have a magnetic hoop and a clamp hoop. And some of those are available. And those are explained on the Juki Quilting website. So if you look up on our website, 
you'll see all the optional hoops available for this machine as well. There are some that are rather unique. And I think that's kind of interesting that we can actually provide a unique hoop to go on such a compact machine. One of those hoops is, believe it or not, to sew on high top tennis shoes. Oh, a shoe hoop. So it's got a shoe hoop. So you can actually do embroidery on the side of your Converse or whatever brand, um, high top tennis shoes, or if you can get anything into that hoop, you can actually use that hoop. It does have a size limitation, which is not a problem because you're gonna be working on a small area anyway. But just keep that in mind that those hoops are available also. And if you're not sure if the hoop can run on the machine, there's one nice thing about our machine. Here it is. These are the optional accessories. Here we go. So let's I'm see. Go. The optional accessories, there's a pocket frame, uh -huh. a sock frame, a mounting base with sock gauge, a round gauge, uh -huh. in-frame starter kit, and then three sizes of different magnetic hoops, which that is so cool. And then right. the frame holder. Exactly. Wow. That's amazing. So also in our frame listings on the machine, it shows you all the listings of hoops that will run on the machine that are actually in the programming for the machine. So you can select it. Ones that have an arrow means that there's multiple size options for those. So you just tell it what size hoop you're putting on or what magnetic hoop you're putting on and the machine will know what size it is. It will then limit you as to being able to select a pattern that's too large for that hoop. Like I said before with the baseball cap, when I told it I have a baseball cap on it, it won't let me select a 200 by 200 millimeter pattern because it won't fit into the baseball cap. The same is true with these other hoop sizes as well. So there's lots of flexibility in hoop. And what you want to do is explore those options when you're comfortable with the machine. Mm -hmm. And this machine is so new to all brands. I'm really excited to order some of those new hoops once we get this machine in more locations. I know that we have it in Metairie and uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, and it sold the first day it was on the floor. <laughs> That's uh, great. Somebody just came in and looked at it and it, it's they loved it. So I'm really excited yeah. about the future of this machine with Juki and Tajima. Well, good. We are too. And I'd like to thank you for allowing me to come in and spend some time with you and show you off some of our toys. You know, we'll look forward to do this again for another toy in the near future. <laughs> have a little surprise video. So a surprise video. Yeah. So we have some new products. Also, there was one, there was another Tajima video that we wanted to show, right? Oh, the, the seat, the custom car company. Okay. Let me pull oh, this. Is fun. This is so cool. And I think these machines are for there are so many different industries that this machine could um, pertain to. You know, I'm a quilter, sewer, embroidery, um, embroiderer, but um, Leather Seats Prime is a customer of Juki, and they just so happen to love their machine. And I like this. So is that the magnetic hoop? That's, That's one of the magnetic hoops that they put on the machine. Wow. Okay. So let's watch that. And what they're actually sewing on is the headrest cover. I like that magnetic frame. I love embroidery on leather. Oh, it looks so great. Now you could actually pump that up a little bit if you were to use a puffy foam and a satin stitch, you could give it dimension. You know, you may not want that on the back of a headrest in your car, but on a baseball cap, you see these baseball caps that have dimensional stitching on them? That's because they put a puffy foam inside there to give it lift. Yeah. So here you go, that's the headrest. Wow. Oh, and you see that quilted leather? Oh. Mm -hmm. And you could totally embroider quilted quilting on, um, on, on the machine. Yes. You just have to mm -hmm. make it an embroidery design. I've been quilting on my embroidery machine all week. Exactly. So there, definitely... there are actually quilt patterns to run in the embroidery mode. So you could actually okay. find them out in the wild. I've run several of them. I had some uh, satin fabric I was playing with. I wanted it to have a little dimension to it. So I went out and I found a nice pretty feather 
I ran the feather pattern on it so it gave it that nice dimension. It was a gift for somebody. So, but there's lots of things you can find out. But quilting is just another element that can be added into it. As far as the machine is concerned, that's just another embroidery pattern. Yeah. So I love that. I want to, definitely wanted to feature that video. But there's some new sidekicks to this machine that's coming yeah. out too, which there is very are. exciting. So yep. um, do you want to say what it is or should I? No, I, you know what? Just go ahead and roll it. Let them, let them watch. Okay, so let me see if I can find that video. Here we go. I think this is it. All right. The Rico RI100 all-in-one printer uses the state-of-the-art technology to provide you with beautiful products in minutes. Import photos from your smart device or computer, create using any graphics program, and even print something that you or someone else has drawn. Customize your shirts or garments using one of the 14 built-in fonts that's included with the software. Or just use another graphic software program such as Paint and use the fonts that are available through that program. So I'm just going to pause it real quick. Sure. A garment printer that's like not humongous for home use or like um, professional commercial use too. What, can you imagine the possibilities? Well, it's, it's again, one of those things that people like to do embellishment on pre-made garments. You know, sometimes we don't have time to make the garment, but we can buy something that we want to embellish. This gives you the availability to do that by printing onto it. And then you can add to it if you do vinyl work or if you do embroidery, you can add embroidery to it. This particular system basically runs like an inkjet printer. It will not print white, neither does an inkjet printer, but you can print and then you can just wash it and wear it like you do normally. And it's about the size of a, of a larger laser printer. And it's complete when you buy it in the bundle. So it's gonna print in the top section and it will fix or secure your inking in the second half on the lower portion of the, of the unit. It's really cool to play with yeah. and it's very simple. You can use your own drawing program, bring it into their software just to send it to the machine. Like you saw here, how easy it was to send the embroidery pattern to the machine. It's even easier to send it to the Rico printer and print your own t-shirts. Yeah, I think Juki is really smart because they're, they are finding the leaders in the industry on certain mm -hmm. products and they are combining forces to bring the best of the best to you. So Rico is very well known in the garment printing and printer um, side of the business. And instead of Juki manufacturing their own printer, which they don't manufacture printers, um, I just think that this is just such a great opportunity to pair this with the Tajima and print out a garment. And then you could even embroider on it after you print something on it too. And it's just, it's just, if you have an embroidery business, you should also offer printing as well. Exactly. Um, yeah, for sure. So, um, this is actually the lady that's talking in this video. Her name is Luann. Yes. And I'm so excited to announce that we have a ton of virtual events scheduled with her throughout January. So keep your eyes peeled for those. But um, we'll uh, finish watching this video. Customize your shirts or garments using one of the 14 built-in fonts that's included with the software. Or just use another graphic software program such as Paint and use the fonts that are available through that program. Start your own business by creating t-shirts and tote bags. You can even print on socks. There is an optional small platen that you can purchase that will allow you to print on socks, the sleeves of a t-shirt, and any other small projects. This is a great way to personalize your home or customize a gift for that special per person. You can print your own fabric using the Rico printer. 
The table runner was completely made with fabrics that were printed. The graphics were found on the internet, including the orange marbled fabric. Customized tote bags. Great idea. And yes, you can print your own fabric for quilting. The print used in this quilt is digitally printed. It was printed on white cotton fabric and then the block pieces were cut out. Imagine creating a memory quilt using this method. I love that idea. Don't you like that? Use your embroidery Ooh. machine to add that special touch to any of your printed projects. One of the built-in embroidery designs from the Tajima Sai embroidery machine was used to enhance this project. Wow. So for more information, wow. so that printer alone will give you more things to do, more things to play with, more fun because you can use it with your sewing machine, with your embroidery, you can combine it with your other crafts and hobbies that you want to work with. And when it prints, it leaves the fabric soft. So I don't know if you've bought commercially printed t-shirts, sometimes they come in and they're kind of hard because the ink does not sink into the fabric. This printing system sinks into the fabric and so the fabric remains soft and it's washable and wearable. So that you can wash it numerous times without it giving away. So it's very durable. That opens up a whole new world of possibilities. And you can only do so many things while your <laughs> embroidery machine is stitching out the millions of stitches in this really intricate design. Or, you know, if you just have a production going on and, and you want to just make the best use of your time, because time is valuable when you're running a business, if you're going to run a business, why not be running the printer and the machine at the same time? No brainer. Exactly. Just like the embroidery machine, you can send it to it, tell it to start, and just wait for it to tell you when it's done. Yeah. So we actually have this available on our website. Is the 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 embroidery machine that we showed today is available now. We actually have them in stock. That's the Tajima Sai, uh, Juki Tajima Sai. Uh, but the garment printer is the Rico R100 R I C O H. And I'll just show everybody just a um, our website on that. Here we go. It's pulling up. Okay, so this is our website. So it actually starts at uh, $3,950. And then you choose your different bundles here. Now, Barbara, I'm going to make a suggestion for our viewers. Mm -hmm. And that is, if you don't have your own heat press, I recommend you go ahead and buy the unit. That's an option. It adds a little bit of expense to, to the system, but it saves you a whole lot of time because you're putting the fabric into the cartridge, basically, into the tray. You put it into the machine. It prints. You're going to take it out and put it into the next unit with the fixer, and that's going to set the colors into the fabric for you. Whereas if you have a separate heat press, you have to take the fabric out, put it into the heat press, make sure it's flat, and then you have to do all of your own timing. This is really simple. You simply take the tray out, put it in, flip the switch for 30 seconds, flip the switch back for three minutes, bing, it's done. Yeah, it's and you like never have to rehandle the fabric. Yeah, it's like an easy bake oven on the bottom. That's exactly. the bottom part. And that's yep. the second option. Is the, Correct. It includes the bottom part. That's the, uh, the oven that fixes everything. So I have to say... Um, Kathleen has a question. She said, where can I see this Juki machine? So currently it's so new for all brands. We only have it in our New Orleans store right now, New Orleans, Louisiana, but we will be looking at um, getting it in other stores. So just contact your local all brands and we will <laughs> let you know. And oh my gosh, Nancy, she says, I think I'm going to start my own business so I can quit my boring job. LOL. <laughs> I I love that and it's I don't even make money doing embroidery I enjoy it so much why not do what you love you know exactly. and just make money off of it sure. um, here's here's a good question from Linda Anderson thank you for watching Linda how big of a piece can you print on that printer 
basically about eight and a half by 11 and a half, about, about the size of a sheet of paper. Wow. That's great. And I loved, love, love that you can actually print your own fabric. So say you want a certain color and a quilt, you, you know, like, oh my gosh, I'm at the end of my quilt and I don't want to go to the store to go buy more fabric. Let me just right. print something real quick that goes with my design. Uh, or, banners for parties. So or how about your kids made a drawing and you want to you want to keep the drawing alive? You can actually take a picture of it and print it onto the fabric. So there's lots of things you can do with the printer. Oh, hey, Luann, and Luann's going to be our virtual instructor. I, it was so nice to meet you the other day, and I'm really excited about you joining us for events. And I hope that doesn't mean that Tim's off the hook for uh, <laughs> joining us to do more virtual uh, education because it's great. So Luann, that's the lady whose voice you heard in the video. It says it's eight by 11.75. Yes. And then there's one more new machine that we have to talk about uh, before we leave. Okay. It's called, and I'm going to butcher it, Kokochi. Close enough. Kokochi? Uh-huh. Okay. That's very, very exciting. So I have a video that Luann did. It's a little bit long. So um, we're actually going to end with that video. Um, but it's like the Sayaka, the Kyrie Sayaka. Kokochi is like the step up from that. Exactly. So what, do you, what do you think about that new machine? Well, I've already gotten rid of my Sayaka, so I'm just waiting for them to come in. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I got to play with the prototype. I got to play with the prototype you know, a little while ago, and I was very impressed with it. And when you see it, you'll understand why, because it's just phenomenal of a machine. And it sews beautifully. The interface, when you see the video, you're going to go, I want one of those, or maybe two. Yeah. So it's only $39.99. The list price is $6,000. So that's phenomenal. And look at that screen. The, the Curie only takes up about this much screen, right? Correct. It's like half. So this is a full size screen. Uh, not quite full size. It's about two and about two and a quarter. Oh, here we go. The old one, Hard but it is an OLED color screen. Wow. So when you play the video, they'll get to see the other little fun things that are in the machine. Yes. Okay. I don't well, want to ruin the surprise. Okay, I'll play the video and I'll we'll stay in the background too um, in okay. case we have any um, questions about it uh, during the video. So let me get that up and running. And I just want to say thank you everyone for watching and joining us um, in our lives. We really love you all. And thank you, Tim, so much for joining us today. And Luann, it was good to see you and, and everybody else in the comments. So um, without further ado, I should have been looking for this video as I talked, right? Here we go. So Tim, it says business plus. Yeah. QVP and Biz Plus. Biz Plus is our upper level dealers. Like you, yes. like you are at, at Baton Rouge and, and Metairie. Yeah. So that's um it's only certain dealers get this this model. So right. They have to be a QVP or Biz Plus dealer to handle the Coco Chi. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the Rico is only available at a Business Plus dealer. Yes. Oh, I love that. 12 inches for needles neck. Yes, sir. That's a good size. It's the same size as the Kure and the Sayaka. 367 stitches. Okay, that's the that looks very nice. And this one still has the dual plates, right? And the spark 
being put. That's great. Touch the stitch to bring up all of the categories of stitches. Swipe to the left or swipe to the right to get your different categories. Select the category. Now you can swipe up or down to see all of the stitches in that category. And then just swipe to the left or right to get to the next category of stitches. So that's Luann, right? Yes, that's Luann. Hey, Luann. <laughs> Select your stitch and you now have on-screen <laughs> editing capabilities. The convenient knobs at the bottom of the screen will allow you to change your presser foot pressure, the width of the stitch, the stitch length. Touch the thread tension icon and it will take you to the new integrated wheel that will allow you to easily adjust your tension. I like how you Touch see it anywhere on the, screen. on the screen to go back. Turn the presser foot lift on or off by touching the icon. Turn your thread trimmers on or off by simply just touching the icon. I got to pause it because I love that feature. <laughs> how you can end with the foot up or down or right. trim it at the end. Right. That's great. Some of the features from the, the Kirei and the Sayaka, they've been brought to the front screen on this one to make them easier and more valuable of, a, of an option to turn on or off because sometimes you just want to turn it off for a minute rather than head go into configuration or go to another screen. You can just turn it off right there on the screen. So you can just turn it off for that one minute that you want to do something in particular and then turn it right back on. Yeah. Very convenient. They, they did a, an exceptional job and being able to sweep left and right on the screens. It's just amazing. I don't have to worry about turning a page. I just sweep like you do on your phone. Yeah. It's it left or right. Cindy Caston actually just commenting that swiping is a nice feature. And I agree. I totally agree. It's like we're getting so used to this <laughs> way yep. of life. Um, exactly. Why not just kind of make it consistent, you know? So, okay, well, let's watch. Look at that gorgeous decorative stitch. And it has that awesome needle plate with the little opening right here that the quick snap off. Right. And then it has the additional feed dogs um, that make it stitch like the TL2010Q or the, um, uh, the TL. other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> yep, drop the feed dogs at the touch of a button. That's the that's the uh, what I is my favorite feature of the Kyrie Sayaka and now Kokochi machine is this needle plate system and that you actually change the feed dogs on the machine and it's so easy to do. Right, you're not doing any screws, but you just use a screwdriver to pop it up and pop them out. You just Drop them in and press down. They lock into position. It's an exceptional system. Yeah. And that needle threader. Mm -mm -mm. I like that needle threader. Yeah, she just grabbed the feed dog and pulled them out. So this is for straight stitch. Correct. And once you put the feed dogs on, if you put on your straight stitch plate, the machine knows it and it will limit you as to your stitch pattern selection. So you cannot select an incorrect stitch with that straight stitch plate on. And that's what's so powerful about the TL machine. People are amazed at how powerful our machines are, especially with the Kirei and the Sayaka. I was rather impressed with them. But the new and exclusive like Juki. Here. I'm sorry. This Go is ahead. what people really like here is this is Wi-Fi built into the machine. Wow. Oh, you can watch YouTube on it, huh? 
That's there will be cool. there will be some limitations, but you should be able to watch YouTube. There will be a project website from Juki that you'll be able to access. So there'll be lots of things to do and play the video so you can watch the project or watch the uh, the task that you're trying to learn on how to do it on the machine. You don't have to go to your computer or have your tablet next to you. You can sit and do it on the machine. There's a speaker built into it, so you'll get the sound as well. Look at y'all stepping up. <laughs> yeah. I like this. Sewing net will allow you to access the Juki websites directly on your machine. So it's up to date. It is. Projects can be opened and videos can be played. And if there are downloadable instructions, those can also be opened up on the screen. How many of y'all have been sewing masks? <laughs> That's so familiar to me. That's cool. So you can watch this video, maybe, <laughs> if it's linked on the Juki page. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah, there are limitations to what you can actually watch with it, but most of it is designed that you're going to access sewing related items from Juki and their projects, and of course, the Juki websites, and of course, the Juki informational uh, websites for the Juki uh, YouTube on Juki, so you can check out educational values or learning things about the machine on the web. Not right. everything we, we read, we actually understand. Sometimes we need a video. Sometimes we still need to pick up the phone and call the dealer. Yeah. The but power the, of video, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. question does it connect to your router or do you actually put your wi-fi username and password in the screen you put your wi-fi password into the system okay it wow. is through wi-fi there's no there's no network cable on it you just go into the configuration you select the wi-fi you enter your password for your wi-fi system and boop, you're done nice want to watch a video on youtube just touch the icon Displayed inside the top cover. Let's I think I like Luann's voice better. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Stitch pattern as an example. That one sounds like a robot. Wow. That is very impressive. Wow. Sweet machine. And you know, you. Uh, Y'all have some on order, so when they come in, you'll be getting some up, I think, out of the first batch. So yeah. somewhere around the uh, late October, early November is our is our current goal that we're looking at. Yeah, we've pre-sold four, I think, already. So Ooh, wow. we just Excellent. put it up recently. So this is the debut of us even talking about it on the All Brand Show. So that's very exciting. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I want to thank everyone for watching. Let me just make sure there's no questions before we go. Um, thank you, Nancy, for watching. We love to, we love all of these machines. So, uh, and thank you, Tim and Luann and everyone from Juki uh, for all your hard work and, and your support. And we really appreciate it. Our pleasure. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. It was good to see you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.